Chelsea have spent an enormous amount of money in the transfer market, and yet they are still somehow struggling to get results in the Premier League. But why? What is preventing us from making forward progress? Is it the players? The system? Both? Let's dive in. Lads, lasses and the rest of the masses, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mono from Mono CFC, and this is a deep dive into Poch's new system at Chelsea Football Club. Maurizio Pochettino has been employing a new variant of his 4-2-3-1 of late, but we seem to be going backwards rather than forwards, so what's going on here? First, I think it's important to look at what the system is trying to achieve before we talk about why it's not achieving it. The setup is supposedly a mixture of a 4-3-3 and a 4-2-3-1, but no matter what Thiago Silva says on Instagram or Poch says in the presses, this is not a 4 at the back system. Let's be honest with ourselves, if you play 3 central defenders in the team, it's always going to act like a 3 at the back system because the full back isn't going to get higher up the pitch, it's not what is natural to them. This formation almost always ends up as a 3-4-3 in possession, with the right back getting higher up the pitch, and one of the centre mids, usually the left sided one, pushing up into a left forward or 10 position. Once we have the ball like this, the idea is pretty simple. We play direct passes from our centre backs or Enzo if he drops deeper, into the front men between the lines or behind the defenders. A lot of the time, Nico Jackson will drop deep to receive the ball, and the two men either side of him will do one of two things, either tuck in and give him support for one-twos, or run in behind for Jackson to find them. Jackson can also switch the ball to the far side, which is something we saw a few times against Knott's Forest. This is a great tactic, and against teams that like to press, it's very effective. The issue arises when we play against teams that sit back, which unfortunately we've been against a lot of recently. Chelsea are notorious for being unable to play through low blocks because the space for those direct passes slash runs just isn't there. Most of the time when we force this idea, the ball just ends up running through to the keeper or out of play. So we have to come up with a solution. When that doesn't work, we play it wider and try to create 2v1 or 3v2 overloads on the wings. We saw this happen multiple times against Liverpool, one of our more successful games, with Sterling and Rhys James combining really well on that right hand side and getting the better of Robertson and Van Dijk on a few occasions. This seems to be what we are being forced into doing most games, as we currently have the most amount of crosses in the entire league, 114 in total which is almost 20 higher than the team in second place, Everton. Our cross accuracy is around 22%, which means that we have successfully crossed the ball to a teammate about 25 times, which is pretty much on par with the other top teams in the league, Brighton, Arsenal and City for example. Not only that, but Chelsea have created the most big chances in the league so far, with 11. The issue is we haven't been converting the chances. The number of big chances missed for Chelsea? Also 11. Despite this, this is a system that works, whether you want to hear it or not. We use this same system to beat Luton 3-0, nothing about the system has changed. What has changed though, is the personnel in that system. Now, there's been a lot of talk about Ben Chilwell and Levi Colwell's positions, some which is warranted, some which is downright nasty and unnecessary. Chilwell especially has been a massive scapegoat despite him actually playing well in most of our games so far this season. And to be honest, those two aren't the problem in this team in my opinion, which might sound shocking but hear me out here. The real problem in this team is this position right here, the left centre mid slash 10 slash left forward whatever you want to call it. It's no secret that Chelsea have an injury crisis and have had one for a long time, but this specific position has had both of our options taken away through injury. This was where Nkunku was supposed to play before he got injured. The man who filled in for him and was actually really good when he played here, Carney Chukwemeka, also injured. One position doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but that absence does make the system fall apart. With Nkunku or Carney in the side, this 3-4-3 shifts into a 3-2-5, with both fullbacks able to get high. Against teams that play with a back four, this gives us a spare man, and this is what makes Chilwell thrive. Chilwell is a decent crosser of the ball, but the majority of his strengths are off the ball. He is great at being the spare man and getting ahead of the fullback or popping up in and around the box. If the player playing in this 10 role isn't a particularly attack minded player like Fernandez isn't, 
Chilwell doesn't really get these kinds of opportunities, as Enzo is more likely to drop deep to collect the ball and then pass across to the other side. This leaves us in a 4v4 where Chilwell can't be the spare man and Chile just isn't good enough on the ball to beat his man and put a ball into the box. He needs to be running off the back of the defender or in behind with a 1-2. Because this keeps happening, it forces Chilwell to occupy this space, instead of someone like Carney or Christo, getting close to Jackson to offer support. But the issue with that is that now all of this space right here is underutilised. As I mentioned before, Levi Colwell is not a fullback. He's an excellent defender and has a fantastic long pass on him, but he doesn't have the attack-minded positioning that playing as a fullback requires in the modern game. He's not going to get high and then overlap, he's not going to be in the position to hit an early cross, and he's certainly not going to get to the byline and cut the ball back like any modern fullback should be able to do. And this isn't me ragging on Levi in any way, it's just not his position and he shouldn't have to play in this role. With a player like Carnes or Nkunku in that 10, it allows Colwell to stay back and play lofted passes up from the back, which is exactly what he's great at, whilst Chilwell, who is a natural fullback, can get higher and provide the width, along with those other attributes I mentioned. We saw a prime example of this in that looting game that we won. In the first half, despite going into the break up a goal, we weren't particularly good, and that was because Enzo was playing high up in this left forward position. In the second half, this changed with him playing deeper and being able to pull the strings with us deciding to go down the right hand side instead and ultimately benefiting because Gusto and Sterling played so well. Real quick, if you're enjoying the content and want to see more, please consider subscribing to the channel. Cheers. So what's the solution? Do we take out one of the three in midfield for a more attack minded player? No, it's pretty obvious if you ask me, but there's one player in this team that is unnecessary slash unneeded, and that's Thiago Silva. Not only has he been rather poor in recent games, he was directly at fault for Alanga's goal and Antonio's goal against West Ham, but against teams like Luton and Forest, we don't need three defenders back, and Silva is the most expendable out of the three in terms of how we play. I have nothing against Thiago, but he really doesn't offer anything to the team. In this system, he just acts like a middleman between De Sassi and Colwell, when we could very easily just cut out this pass and just play the ball directly to the other centre-back. Our play is significantly slowed down by having this extra centre-back. Chelsea have the second most passes out of all teams in the league, with 2,780 passes in total. 421 of those passes are just Thiago Silva, who has the second most in the league and the most in our team, and almost all of them are backward slash sideways passes that we don't need to make. We can take Silva out of the team. If we really needed a player here to receive a pass, then Sanchez can come out and be that middleman. We've seen Pep Guardiola do this exact thing with Edison. What's the point in having the goalie be a spare, unmarked man when you can push him up higher and create that spare man further up the pitch in attacking areas? With Silva now out of the team, we get to add an extra attacker. So what would be my personal solution up top? Well, I'm a big advocate for Mikhailo Mudrik, so it may come as a surprise to you that I'm not going to say him. No, I think the perfect solution to this problem is to shift Raheem Sterling onto the left hand side, then bring on Noni Madaweke or more suitably Cole Palmer onto the right hand side. This gives us the 5 up top that we need to create overloads, puts Enzo into his natural 8 position where he can dictate play, and means we don't sacrifice either defensive midfielder, which will be beneficial if and when Romeo Lavia comes into the team next to Caicedo. Overall, I don't think we should change the system entirely because we are finding success with it. We just need to start finishing our chances and the wins will start to come. I do think that our results lately have cast a rather dreary shadow over good performances, with our fan base being rather emotional and reactionary, as is usually the case with us Chelsea fans in truth. There are slim margins in football and unfortunately we've been on the wrong side of those slim margins as of late. If Jackson had scored his chance, or Sterling converted from Chilwell's peach of a cross early on against Notts Forest, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Not to mention that the majority of the goals we have conceded have come from individual errors, which will happen regardless of the system, that's football. There is no need for us to panic, there's over 30 games to go and we've yet to have our full first team on the pitch together. 
We have to stick together and back the team and the manager. The players and the coaching staff read the vitriol that is spewed online, and it doesn't benefit anyone to be negative. The international break came at a rather good time and will allow us to reset, and hopefully we'll allow Pochettino to go back to the drawing board and address some of the issues that we've spoken about today. We move on to an away day at the Vitality against Bournemouth after the international break, which I will be previewing beforehand as ever. But before we end the video, it's time for the question of the day. As always, I'm going to highlight some of the comments from the last video, so here are a few responses to the last question of the day. Thanks guys for your continued support as ever. If you want your comment to be featured in the next video, leave your answer to this video's question of the day down below with QOTD at the start. So for this week's question of the day, we'll go for this. What would be your solution to our problems and why? But that was just my deep dive into Chelsea's woes so far this season. Thank you ever so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below, and if you'd be so kind, subscribe to the channel and leave the video a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to tap the notification bell so you never miss a video from me, or check out some of the other videos on the channel on screen right now. I've been Mono from Mono CFC, and remember, in the rain or in the dry, keep that blue flag flying high. Come on, you blues.